The Lost World Museum asks, is it apes, aliens, or Adam? And although we feel that we came from the Adam standpoint, we encourage people to figure out what makes the most sense for themselves. But we feel that the pre-flood people were a lot taller, stronger, and more intelligent than we are today. And that because of the changes brought about by the flood in atmosphere, electromagnetic field, nutritional content of the soil, etc., we don't see the 900-year lifespan as it says the pre-flood world had. But since it took several generations for people to dumb down in size and age post-flood, is this the best explanation why we see ancient megalithic-style structures all over the world? So we went to Peru with this question, are these ruins something originally built by people much larger than today with pre-flood technology that we've lost? One specific thing we wanted to see was this archway and steps. So again, as we're looking for evidence of giants, we're just looking at and seeing the what the doorways look like, the steps down here. And this doorway right here is 11 feet tall. And our guide said that that, that lentil up there was even higher at one point. Okay, let's take a look at the steps next. What an archeologist told us is that these stones right here on top weren't there originally. So we've got like a, a 30 inch width from the back of this second step to this step right here. You see, that somebody just went up just a second ago, and if that, this extra little addition on, it would be very difficult to navigate the step. Watch. This is John streaming live to his TikTok audience, showing what the archaeologist said, that this was built by and for giants. And it definitely seems like those stairs were added, so I think he's right in that. Now, how much taller were these people? Who knows? John's six foot two, and somebody that is seven to ten feet would easily find these stairs more comfortable. Taller than that, I don't think that the doorway would have been wide enough for somebody's shoulders. But you could definitely make a case that this was built by giants. One museum we didn't get to, but I found fascinating in our research, was a private museum that has two heads of Inca that would have been over nine feet tall. The guy that wrote the article said the actual mummified head of the crowned king in the photograph is almost twice as large as my own, and I wear the largest hat of anyone in my acquaintance. When we were invited to the private gold museum to begin with, I was expected to be dazzled by gold. However, it dawned on me that the minute I walked through the door that the size of the head, and indeed his whole body, was the unique feature of this king. The gold was impressive, but the size of the man was more than impressive than the gold." The golden tunic that hung on the wall was made of spun gold. This was the first time in my life I'd seen gold woven into a fabric for clothing. The tunic was over eight feet tall and tailored in such a way as to suggest that it was not intended to drag on the floor behind a king, but rather to hang straight down to the floor with no further. That made the tunic itself a measuring device for the original height of the king. Let's see if there's any other evidence. One thing we didn't know about until we got there was this. A guy just told us that that's um, one of the evidences that they have that they believe uh, people were uh, giant in the past. But after having a chance to evaluate everything we saw on the trip, I don't think these are giant steps, but just some of the cuts that they made all over. But it is interesting to me that that's what their interpretation of stones like that are, that that appeared to them as giants. But it does bring up something super interesting. What are all those cuts? Somebody that has to grow all their own food and make all their own clothing from scratch is not going to be sitting there saying, oh, I think I'll just chip another one in over here and another one over there. To us, it looked like they were cutting them with ease. So that means they either had the strength or the technology to do that, or both. One final thing happened in Sexy Woman regarding the evidence of giants. Of the things that I wanted to document while we were in Peru, one was a stone that looked like it had giant fingerprints on it. And I'd seen it in a video where somebody that was somewhere around Soxley Woman had, had found a stone that looked like that. Now, this is not that same stone, but it's the same type of stone. And I was so excited to come around the corner and have our guide all of a sudden explain that he felt that this was giant fingerprints, you know, on the side of this stone. Now, in the end, I think that this is the type of stone that weathers in that particular pattern. But again, it was fairly consistently coming up from our guides that giants was a theme that they felt was a good, reasonable explanation for some of the things that we saw. In May 2017, there was some news that seven and eight foot skeletons were uncovered in the Ecuador and Peru Amazon region and that they're undergoing examination in Germany, according to a research team headed by British anthropologist Russell Dement. 
So far since 2013, a half a dozen of these have been found, and they're dating from the 14 and 1500s. So it's not without reason that Peruvians have this idea that there was giants in their history. I don't know if we'll ever know the true history of Peru, but the idea of giants and ancient technology being responsible for the creation of these impossibly huge and seemingly precision cut stones certainly brings plausibility without the need for ancient aliens. <laughs> 